Well, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about our wireless solutions today. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we appreciate your time and uh, value the effort that, you know, uh, it takes to uh, separate some time from the regular uh, work to come in and learn more about the products. Um, wireless solutions, it's a, a great uh, product that we have that complements the IP uh, side of things real well. Uh, we're going to be talking a, a little bit about, you know, product overview, uh, show you the products that we have. We're going to be showing you the dip switches, how the, how, what they mean and how they work, uh, the configuration for these switches for the different uh, uh, project configurations, such as point to point or point to point, multi point uh, in a repeater scenario. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the operation of these can of these uh, units, uh, some installation recommendations, uh, a little bit uh, of uh, the uh, coming soon cloud services, and last but not least, our tough dog sweepstakes. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. Let's get started. So, <clears throat> product overview. Um, we have three different radios. We have the TDP2PX, the TDP2PX150, and the TDP2PX900. Um, what are the differences on these? Uh, especially the TDP2PX and TDP2PX900 will differentiate from the TDP2PX900 uh, because of the internet protocol that it uses. Uh, and of course, because of the capabilities of this 900 unit. This can do up to 667 megabytes speed. Uh, um, and it's got a total bandwidth of 100 megabytes. Whereas these two will have 150 megabytes uh, per second uh, uh, transmission speed and a total bandwidth of 35 megabytes. Um, these particular units uh, are very similar, could be mixed and matched uh, in a uh, installation but uh, this cannot be mixed and matched with the 900, okay? So just keep that in mind. 900 will have to have its own 900 units to connect to it, uh, whereas these two could be connected, you know, from, uh, from one to another. Now, what is especially uh, different from the P2P-X uh, uh, to the P2P-X-150? So the P2P-X has a... Uh, 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 an input, a power input of 12 volts DC that will allow it to be connected to our solar solutions. So our solar solutions will be able to provide power to this unit. And then this unit could connect connect to a uh, an IP camera so that, you know, they could be up and running with the power of the solar uh, unit which is great because that way you will avoid the use of inverters or PUE switches uh, and, and simplify, you know, uh, the job of, of making, you know, making it happen, uh, get it to work, okay? Now, these other two radios, the 150 and the 900, they're regular PUE. So they require either a PUE injector or a PUE uh, switch, okay? Uh, well, going back to the P2P-X, uh, let's say that you have your radio plugged into 12 volt DC on the solar solution, but it is transmitting to a building. And on that building, you do have access to perhaps, you know, uh, to power and um, you may not necessarily would like to run another uh, uh, power cable to uh, supply power to this unit. So what you do is you can also use one of our uh, PoE injectors, 24 volts DC PoE injector, injectors, which I will show you next. Uh, so that unit there again, the P2P-X is either 12 volts DC or PoE 24 volts DC. So this could not be powered with a regular PoE switch. The other two could, and that's actually the only way to power this, be a PoE switch or a PoE injector, uh, but using 48 volts DC, okay? 
So uh, again, one of the most important things here in this radius is the fact that, you know, uh, the transmission speed and the total bandwidth, okay? Keep this in mind because later on, on the presentation, I'm gonna be talking about this and uh, the calculations to make, uh, for you to, to know how many IP cameras can you feed into these units, okay? All right. So the next slide is going to show uh, what I was talking about, the PoE injectors. We have the regular TDP2PX, which would be a 48 volt DC injector, and the P2PX-24, which will be the 24 volt DC injector, okay? Uh, and this is just the bracket for the radio. So the bracket for the radio uh, will allow you to uh, um, install the, the, the radio and actually tilt it or move it uh, uh, more freely to, to get it to the desired position, okay? Uh, it comes with a, uh, a couple of um, uh, uh, square, uh, well not square, rectangular shaped holes also for the metal straps. So uh, very uh, easy to uh, work with unit. And, um, and this is of course uh, aluminum, it's, it's light and, and it is uh, uh, power painted uh, so that it will withstand corrosion uh, very well. <clears throat> the industrial design of these units is, are really, really good. They're IP65, so they're good for outdoor, they're outdoor rated. Uh, all the switches and everything is going to be are going to be hidden under this lid here, which uh, will prevent you know uh, water to come in uh, and and will try to reduce the amount of uh, humidity that goes into these uh, connections. Right. Um, also, the bracket itself it's very easy to mount. It also comes with that same square, uh, I'm sorry, rectangular shaped hole for the metal straps. So you can go in first and strap these to the pole, and then these will allow you to move and uh, you know to aim the camera to where you wanted it, wanted it to be an, uh, aimed. Uh, and then once you have it there in the right position, then you'll just kind of tighten it with this uh, uh, plastic nut that is in the back of the unit, so that you, the unit stays strong uh, in 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 the position where you wanted it to be, right? Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is the 4G LTE wireless outdoor router. So this particular unit, it's a great unit because um, it's a, it's an actual router. Um, uh, it's it's we it's meant to be used for remote locations where they don't have internet, so that you could connect it to our cameras and see the cameras. But uh, you could also easily use these. Uh, to provide internet to uh, to, to a, a remote area where they don't have AT and T wired uh, or Time Warner or Spectrum, you know, wired internet. So uh, this could provide the internet to, to those locations. And the beauty of this is that since it is outdoor rated, you could put it outside to, to get better cellular coverage, right? Um, it also has a Wi-Fi uh, LAN, so you can connect wirelessly to it. And this actually makes it great for the um, uh, the, the antennas, um, I'm sorry, for the cameras, uh, because let's say you wanna come in and check videos and you don't wanna do it through the 4G LTE network because you don't wanna use up your bandwidth, right? Or your data. So you can just connect to the wireless uh, signal of this radio and uh, uh, immediately connect to the cameras and then you can download videos or do some backup, uh, so on and so forth. So that way you also avoid the fact that you could, you need to go up the ladder and connect to uh, uh, physically to the unit uh, to get access to records, right? So it's great uh, addition to the wireless product line. Uh, right now, also, we're talking, we're still talking to Verizon and AT&T, but we have successfully used uh, T-Mobile right now, and that is the only proven carrier that works with our, uh, with our uh, 4G LTE devices, including this router, okay? So uh, before you take this into deployment, 
um, make sure that uh, the area where you want to install this has uh, T-Mobile coverage. Uh, as soon as we get uh, Verizon to work with it or, a, or an AT&T, we will certainly let you know so that you could have a more peace of mind that if one doesn't work, then maybe another one could, all right? So <clears throat> let's talk about the deep switches. So uh, many wireless uh, manufacturers out there, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, many popular, especially uh, working with uh, uh, network. Basically, the majority of these wireless manufacturers out there are building their units to work with uh, network devices in general. Uh, our idea is not necessarily that. Our idea is to, to, to make these devices to work for uh, CCTV installations, right? Surveillance uh, installations. So what we have done here with the deep switches is we have made them um, to work so that you don't have to bring a computer on site and go in there and um, program an IP address for these devices uh, and also, you know, just uh, 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 configure them so that the, the access point can get the client and so on and so forth. Uh, the beauty of these deep switches is that uh, these deep switches <clears throat> will help you physically just configure them uh, and easily get it, you know, get it done. Um, especially on point-to-point -point scenarios where you will have to only move one deep switch. Uh, it'll be a, a work of, you know, a two-minute work to get it configured. And then all you have to do is just bring them up, get them, you know, to see each other, getting, getting them aligned so that they could actually work. Uh, these radios, again, are meant more for like CCTV. So uh, the transmission range will be from 200 feet all the way to two miles, <clears throat> uh, depending, of course, on the radio model, right? So let me illustrate uh, the deep switch operation here. So um, number one will be the access point uh, or client. By moving this switch, you will determine whether if this unit is going to stay as a client or it's going to become the access point, okay? Uh, what I said before is that on point-to-point uh, -point uh, uh, installations, basically all you have to do is just move switch number one into uh, an access point for the access point and then leave the other ones off. And for the client, just leave everything off as it comes from the factory, right? Um, eliminating a lot of work to do. With that, guys, your devices are going to work, okay? You can see now that these um, uh, uh, radios are communicating, uh, are under the same frequency so that they can talk to each other, okay? So we got the access point as an access point, and then the clients, all number one is off as clients, and then they're all under the same frequency, okay? Switches two to eight. Now, switches nine to 10 will help us keep this an address, okay? In all point to multi-point scenarios, access point pins number nine and 10 will go up will turn will be turned on okay so for that we're going to do that the rest of it is going to be like binary okay binary from numbers one to four right now in my uh, uh slide this is not necessarily um uh, uh, uh in order right in binary order but uh we just did it so that it looks easier. So the first one here stays down, right? The second one goes up, which will be number one in binary. 
The third one will be, will stay number 10 down and number nine is gonna be up. So it's different than this one. This will be number two. <clears throat> and the fourth one here, it's gonna go up. So uh, this would be number three in binary, right? Uh, and number one stays like number four. So as you can see, they're all different configurations. But then again, the access point, when you have point to multi-point, pins number nine and 10 will have to go up, okay? With that, guys, that's all you need to do. Everything is said and done. Uh, you got your access point. Every one of these are, it's your client. You got all these under the same frequency, right? And you got your clients with the different address, the different a different number. With that, that's all you need to do. Your point to multi-point scenario, it's going to be working, okay? So, <clears throat> If you will have a point to another point to multi point separated, you would like to change the frequency here on that group so that they talk a different language and they're completely separated. Okay. So um, let's take a look at you know the common uh, transmission modes for these units. Okay. So regular point to multi points. Okay. So point to multi points, it's going to have a single uh, access point transmitting to a client, okay? So these are very solid uh, communication uh, 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 paths in between the antennas. Make sure you always have free line of sight. Uh, I know that many antennas, uh, because of the strength of the signal, work without having free line of sight. People do put them in, you know, with trees in the middle and something. But remember that these are waves. And even though we cannot see them, these waves bounce in whatever they're, you know, touching. So uh, if they're leaf trees, they're, they're bouncing back or they're being absorbed by, you know, the leaves, the, the, the tree leaves. And eventually as this tree will grow, your signal is going to start weakening and weakening. So you will have a, a, a loss of packages now and then, uh, and, and your, this, the, the, the communication is not going to be good. So always make sure that you have free line of sight so that these radios work at, at their best, okay? Um, so once you have free line of sight and your cable, you know, your wires are working, I'm sorry, your wireless is working just as, fiber or cable, uh, you can connect your devices and they're gonna be transmitted uh, flawlessly from point A to point B, okay? Or the other way around, all right? <clears throat> now, let's say uh, we have point to multi-point. This illustrates a, little, uh, illustrates a little bit point to multi-point, okay? So here we have remote antennas, and then we have the central station, right? This point to multi-point transmission is also called um, the star. Uh, uh, it's called star topology or, or star communication and point to multi-point, okay? Because you have one central place transmitting to different locations, okay? So with that, um, just make sure that if you have different groups, Again, the, the, uh, the frequency on these different groups is different, but uh, the configuration is gonna be about the same. You will have your access point, you will have your client, uh, and then you will number your, or, or differentiate uh, or add, give, a, give an address to your clients so that they can work normally. Uh, there is gonna be a, a separation of at least three feet in between the different uh, access points here in the central location so that you don't get any uh, interference. You can uh, make sure that that distance is, is there so that you can guarantee that there will be no um, uh, interference between these groups, okay? Uh, but once you normally uh, separate the frequencies, you will have no problem at all on that, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> The next transmission mode is the repeater mode, right? 
So normally, when you have, uh, let's say, uh, a building in, 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 in between, or, you know, you have, uh, 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 you know, big uh, uh, tree line uh, in between of your point A and B, then you cannot transmit. So what you do is that you're going to create a repeater or let's think of an, uh, uh, you know, a, a homeowners association where you have a, one of those private, uh, 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 you know, uh, subdivisions uh, and they want a camera going from the entrance to, uh, you know, uh, where they're going to keep the recordings. And that is one of the houses of the uh, association. Uh, but it's not in, in, in free, you know, line of sight. And even though if you could do some poles, they have some palm trees and such. So what do you do? Well, you do this type of scenario, right? Where um, the actual... Uh, uh, antennas could serve as repeaters so you're gonna you're gonna build a, a, a repeater by putting one antenna receiving the signal from the access point you're gonna wire these back to back and then you're gonna have that antenna service a repeater to send the signal to the end um, uh, um, to, 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 to the client to the end client okay so with that you are actually no longer having to worry about that building in between or that corner in between or the tree line and you're able to transmit uh, flawlessly from point A to point B by having uh, a couple of repeaters in, in between, okay? Uh, it's actually very self-explanatory, works real uh, easy. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind too is that <clears throat> the frequency on the repeater group here needs to be different than the frequency from point A to, uh, to B over here, okay? So keep that in mind, uh, just change the frequency and then that way you don't have any interference coming from this one to, uh, uh, to, to letter C here or from this one to letter B here, okay? So um, just keep that in mind and with that you should be good to go. Okay, now one of the things here to consider too is what is the um, angle, uh, the, the, the angle of uh, uh, the scope for this radio. Uh, all of our radios have a 60 degree angle, which is, you know, uh, quite sufficient for uh, the majority of the installations. So if you're going to do a point to multi point, make sure that you're within that 60 degree angle. If you have, let's say, a camera, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, some cameras with a, a, a client uh, in a straight line from the radio, and then you have another one, 30 degrees, and then you have a third one that's 90 degrees, uh, don't attempt to connect that one to that same access point because you're going to have trouble. So uh, for that, I recommend you to get another access point uh, for that particular third radio, right? And then just leave this one within that 60 degree scope, okay? So that you can get, you know, uh, the signal transmitted perfectly fine. Now, you could have up to four of these radios within that 60 degree scope. So if you have, let's say, some that are in front, some that are in the back, you know, uh, and, and you can have that type of uh, uh, situation, uh, that's fine, as long as you're within that 16 degree, 60 degree angle, okay? So uh, always try to keep your access point to where your recorder is and your client where your cameras are, okay? So that you don't have any problems with the uh, transmission. Uh, remember, of course, the farther the distance, the greater the scope. The scope will grow as the distance goes, right? So you could always have a, a greater angle, you know, if you are a mile away from, or, you know, uh, half a mile away from the radio. So uh, that's also good because it'll allow you to make, you know, that angle grow a little bit. But of course, uh, the smaller the angle, the farther the transmission transmission distance, or, you know, the, the, uh, the farther the distance, uh, the less the, the bandwidth, okay? So when you're transmitting so long, 
then your bandwidth might actually reduce a little bit. So, um, but the reality too is that the majority of the CCTV um, installations are in between uh, 400 to 1,000 feet. You know, it's kind of rare to have something that goes beyond that. Uh, but well, the good thing is that our radius could go up to uh, two miles depending on radius. So keep that 60 degree angle in mind. So we've talked about the radios and how the dip switches work and how, you know, the different connections, but how many IP cameras can actually you fit into the radios? This is a great question. And um, <clears throat> this will help us understand the system a little bit better. Um, Remember when I first uh, uh, was showing you the radius and you uh, so precisely the megabyte per second, the transmission speed and the total bandwidth on these different radios. So this is where uh, that information comes to play. Uh, you're going to use that information to determine how many cameras can you feed into these radios. Okay. So Let's just take a look at this chart here uh, with the H264 compression and H265, okay? Even though the majority of our units, or I'd say many, all of our units right now are H265, you will bump into an existing installation with units that are H264, right? So good thing is that our MVRs and DVRs will, um, show you the, the, the consumption rate on each of the cameras, right? Even the cameras could show you that. So you can actually, by seeing the consumption rates of the cameras, see how many cameras you are going to be potentially, or you could potentially feed into these radios. Now, the fact that the radios have 35 uh, megabytes uh, 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 for bandwidth or 100 bytes, 100 megabytes uh, bandwidth for the 900 unit doesn't mean that you can use it all. It is always recommended to use 70% of it just to allow the cameras to, to, to have some margin for the fluctuation of the bit rate, okay? Which, by the way, you can also control that. Uh, uh, you can choose variable bit rate or you could use continuous bit rate. The continuous bit rate will not be will not uh, uh, change but the problem with that is that if for some reason you know you get more motion in your uh, in the camera scene then your bit rate may lose some packages uh, uh, because it's not able to adjust whereas the variable will have a fluctuation you know on on the bit rate consumption and that fluctuation is what is going to uh, cause some peaks. And if you use the 70% of the total bandwidth, you will have space to play. Whereas if you kind of maximize that, sometimes you could lose packages and you could see an image uh, becoming choppy or, you know, uh, uh, slow or even frozen, right? So make sure that you keep that in mind using 70% of the total bandwidth for the radius so that you could, whenever you use your calculations, you could do, uh, you, you could, have it working well, okay? So on H264, you know, we have the 1080p was using about three to four megabytes per second, depending on how many frames per second you're feeding, right? Uh, but now with H265, that drops down to one to two megabytes per second, which is great because, you know, now let's say 1080p at uh, 30 frames per second or 15 frames per second, and I don't have that math quite clear, but it'll utilize about two megabytes per second. Now, if you have a uh, 35 megabyte uh, uh, radio to play with, <clears throat> minus 30%, that'll be about 25 megs that you have to play with. So for two megabytes, how many cameras can you put? about 12 cameras, 12 two megapixel cameras using two megabytes per second, right? And still have time, I'm sorry, I still have space for for uh, uh, 
for for fluctuation, right? Now, four megapixels, which is you know a more popular camera or our most popular camera, will use from one to four megapixels. But a four megapixels with uh, 15 frames per second will be about uh, 1.5 to two megabytes per second. So same thing, you could do up to 12 um, cameras on this small 150 radio, right? And 4K, if you have a 4K camera that is one, uh, let's say to uh, to six megabytes, let's let's just do you know a four four megabytes per second. You could do up to six of these 4K cameras on these radios, the small radios, okay? Which is great, right? Um, now, if we talk about the 900, then you could do a bunch of them. You could do up to uh, pretty much, uh, let's say, 70 megabytes uh, that you have to play with uh, divided by six megabytes for the 4K camera. You have about 12 of these uh, uh, 4K cameras in, in, um, at six megabytes per second, which means almost uh, perhaps 25 uh, frames per second. So, you know, it's really good because actually many of the recorders won't allow you to even do that. You may actually be able to um, uh, 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 do a, 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 as much as, uh, you know, 15 frames, 12 frames, even seven frames, which will drop down your bandwidth, uh, uh, your bit rate for those cameras to about four megabytes or even less than that. Which will allow you to do up to twenty, you know, or or, or uh, fifteen to twenty cameras, four K cameras on that little uh, on that nine hundred radio. So that is actually pretty good. Um, we also have the H two sixty five plus, and I am sure that we're going to be continuing to see more compression in the CCTV industry. So as 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 they compress, as they lower the bit rate. Uh, usage and bandwidth uh, you know uh, increases in in this type of uh, devices we're going to be able to fit a lot of cameras into these uh, wireless radios so let me show you here um, you know just to, to exemplify what I was talking about but let's just uh, uh, think of a point to multi-point scenario okay so the fact that you could do up to 10 cameras, uh, not 10 cameras, what did we say? Let's say eight cameras, four megapixel, eight cameras <clears throat> in the small radio does not mean that on a point to multi point, you're gonna be able to do eight cameras per um, client, right? Even though this client has the capability of doing so, we're gonna have to think of the total capability of the access point, okay? So the access point total capability is gonna be eight cameras, right? Eight four megapixel cameras, right? So <clears throat> with that, we're gonna have to think of all the clients. Of course, if you don't have one of these, then you might increase one over here and another one over here. If you only have two two clients, then you could do up to four cameras on each of them, right? So, <clears throat> but the, the total amount of of cameras uh, needs to be considered in the access point. If you have a point to multi point, then no problem. The same amount of cameras that you could transmit here, you will transmit over here. So you could do eight cameras on a point to multi point. I'm sorry, on a point to point, but not on a point to multi point. Okay, so keep that in mind whenever you're, do, you're, you're doing point to multi point. Uh, if you're doing a uh, <clears throat> TDP to PX 900, then that unit uh, can take up to 20 cameras. And if you have a point to multi point scenario with that unit, then you know, you'll, you're gonna have to divide those 20 cameras uh, <clears throat> by the number of uh, slave units that you have, okay? So uh, it's very easy to you know, think, now that you see it, now that you know it, you'll be able to understand and make your calculations correctly so that whenever you get to these type of uh, 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 scenarios, or you know, uh, uh, when you have these these uh, 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 <clears throat> um, cases, then you know how to do. Okay. 
questions about these guys, questions about the deep switches, questions about, you know, the uh, bandwidth, questions about, uh, 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 you know, the amount of cameras that you can put in here. No? All good? All right. So let's move on. <clears throat> uh, so this, we're, this slide here is going to, and, and the next slides are going to talk about the installation what to do and what not to do, okay? So always think that the radios are sending out waves. Waves that are going up and down and what you want, and this is the reason why we always, and all the manufacturer, uh, the, the, the wireless manufacturers recommend free line of sight is because these waves, even though, again, we cannot see them, uh, need to naturally and flawlessly uh, travel to the, to, to the receiver, okay? So that receiver needs to be able to capture them all. If we do something like this, where we put them uh, very close to, you know, the, the, the ceiling part, and then we have... A, uh, another building here, even though, yeah, the antennas see each other, uh, we don't want them to be really close to the ceiling because then you're going to lose strength on your waves, okay? You're going to lose strength in your waves and those waves are going to bounce uh, <clears throat> back into a different uh, uh, direction and you're going to get a weak signal. So always you always need to be able to give these uh, a, a little bit of a space. And I'm gonna show you in a chart later, uh, uh, you know, what the recommended space from the floor is so that your waves can actually travel fine and go to the destination correctly, okay? So always try to rise up. Don't, uh, don't, leave, don't, don't leave them near the, uh, the, the ceiling or near the floor so that the, the waves don't bounce out, okay? Also here, for instance, consider if you have one building going to another, consider going until the edge of the building so that you don't have anything that causes interference. Or if you cannot do that, because let's say some people, they, want, they wouldn't like this to be seen, you know, just consider putting them in the, in, in the roof or the, uh, where, where you have... Um, uh, 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 space enough to lift them up so that the, the, the waves can travel fine. But don't do this, okay, guys, so that, you know, your waves bounce to a different direction, okay? So this is the recommended recommended uh, height for you to uh, uh, put the antennas uh, from, the, from the floor, right? So five feet, you're losing potential. 10 feet, you're still losing a little bit of uh, signal. And 20 feet, you're going to be just perfectly fine. Your wave is going to be able to go and start stretching perfectly fine until it reaches the destination. And that is going to give you 100% of potential, okay? So just keep that in mind. I think that in the range of 15 to 20 feet, you're going to be perfectly fine, okay? But uh, you got to be, again, staying away from the ground. And again, just try to avoid being close, uh, that, that close to the, to the floor so that you lose uh, effecti effectiveness on the wavelength, okay? All right, questions about these guys? No? Uh, I think it's very self-explanatory, so uh, just keep it in mind for your installations. Now, cloud management. So cloud, cloud management is something that's coming in soon. Uh, again, uh, the intention of our radios and the deep switches is to make it easy for the customers to deploy them, right? But uh, many customers want to have uh, access to the radios remotely. So this access uh, is, is now going to be available via the cloud management. Now, what do you need to do to do that? So you will have to go and connect directly to your antenna, right? 
to the IP address of the antenna, and you're gonna give the antenna uh, a number, right? A number that is generated from the cloud. This number is gonna help this antenna go to the network, go to the ethernet, internet, and uh, and find uh, be found by the cloud management. Okay. So once you do that, then you're gonna be able to see your 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 radius uh, online. This is just a little snapshot on the cloud service. Let me actually see if I could bring the dashboard here live so that you can see it. Okay, can you see it there? So this is a live view of the dashboard. This is gonna show you how many devices you have if they are online. You know, uh, if you are sharing these with uh, some other users, you could see who's online, right? And um, also it's gonna give you a little snapshot on, you know, how much is this being used and such, right? Uh, we are also coming out soon with access points, uh, meaning internet access points, okay? So you will be able to have that list over here, right? Um, but see here, oops. Let me just. Let me go and log in. It kicked me out. So. Okay, so here on their CPE, then you will have your antennas here, right? And on their info message, you're gonna see pretty much, you know, everything that uh, you have for the antennas. You're gonna be able to even reboot them in case that they're not working correctly. Um, and uh, you will see the upload speed, see if, you know, there's something that's not right. Sometimes we have birds uh, like bigger birds that will go and kind of step on the antenna and then move it down. Uh, and, and you'll be able to see here if, for instance, the, uh, the, the speed here is not necessarily correct, uh, uh, you will have an idea that maybe the antenna is being moved, right? Or just, you know, workers going out and making repairs to a home or to a building and they just, you know, step on the radio and then just, you know, kind of, uh, 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 move it from the original position uh so that you're going to be able to see it from here you know if the speed or, or the uh, the aiming is not correct uh and, and again rebooting the units so you're going to be able also to upgrade the units from here in case that there is a software update of course but uh all that you're going to have access uh uh from here right how far from this to happen well you know we're about uh, a good, I think, uh, uh, two months, maybe a little bit less, uh, but we should have it available on our website. So our website is gonna have a little button there that will take you to the cloud. And then on this cloud service, you're gonna be able to manage your antennas. Again, it might not be for everybody, but uh, uh, the installers that would like to have control uh, or be able to service the antennas remotely, you know, this will be a tool that they would like to use, that you would like to use, okay? All right, so uh, as soon as we get there, we will definitely let you know. <clears throat> we'll put it up there. We'll perhaps make a more thorough training on the cloud service uh, so that you guys know how to actually, actually add the devices, what is the number that I'm talking about, you know, for the, uh, uh, for, for the devices so that they can get connected. It's actually very easy to do, uh, but I will be more specific on that. <clears throat> and then also, um, we will be uh, uh, showing you, you know, all these stats that you get and all that stuff. <clears throat> okay. Um, so with that, guys, uh, my computer is getting a little frozen over here. Um, I think that that actually concludes the presentation. Um, uh, you know, uh, I would like to, uh, of course, go. But before we go, 
I'd like to talk about our sweepstakes, just, you know, that promotion that we have for the end of the year. It's a, it's a very nice promotion that uh, for every $500 that you buy, you will get a ticket to participate in the, in the raffle for the end of the year. Now, the raffle is going to be really nice. We're going to get uh, <clears throat> a big green egg for the first prize. And then we're going to get for the second, third, and fourth prizes, we're going to get some nice Yeti coolers, a Yeti tund uh, Tundra, a Yeti uh, Roadie, and then a Yeti Ho uh, Hopper for uh, uh, the second, third, and fourth prize. And from five to ten, you're going to get some nice Yeti tumblers, okay? So um, I, uh, I really hope that you win something, you know, uh, a line. We have our hopes on you because we know that you're going to invite us to a carnita asada once you get the big green neck. So uh, make sure that you keep them buying and keep them getting tickets, all right? So uh, with that, uh, I am going to be done for the presentation. Oh, one more thing, you know, um, next week we are going to have our Black Friday sale like what we have every year. We have very nice and attractive items for this uh, year. So uh, just to anticipate, we're going to have some 4K cameras at around $30. So it's going to be exciting. So uh, make sure that uh, you come in. We're also going to have some, uh, uh, perhaps some breakfast tacos or some, uh, you know, uh, uh, energy bars in the shape of donuts. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can come in and have breakfast and take a look at what we're going to have. So uh, 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 come in, don't forget to come in uh, and maybe it'd be a good opportunity for you to stock some good product uh, at a very good price. All right. So with that, again, uh, uh, I'd like to, to end this presentation. Um, if there...